Well, welcome home, Cross Timbers. It is so great to be able to gather for church today online. We've got Facebook and YouTube pulled up here. We would love to know who's watching and where you are watching this morning. Uh, my name is Chase. I'm one of the pastors here, and I am joined by Jen Hi. and Caroline. Hello. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning How are we doing? Good. Fairly well. Fairly well. <laughs> We got a good and a fairly well. We'll take it. We'll okay. take it. Not yeah. bad at all. Well, we are in the middle of, we're in the middle, we're actually at the end today. We're the not end in the middle. Of our TED Talks <laughs> series. So we've been looking at Ted Lasso. And uh, today's a really special message from Toby. Uh, and this has been more than just like three random messages, right, right. Jen? Tell us, yes. a, tell us a little bit about, especially today, like what were these three messages really? I think really these three messages were Toby's kind of core things to teach mm -hmm. over the years, kind of his big three takeaways that what would he leave us with? And yeah. it kind of relates to Ted Lasso, but it's not like, oh, you need to go watch Ted Lasso. Yeah. It's not really that at all. At yeah. all but a little bit. It, a little bit, but it is more of how can we use things that are out in the world to kind of help share the message of the gospel yeah. and not be strange. Or weird. Not be strange. I mean, I can be strange about other things, but you know, it's you're just saying a way don't be like the weird church people that exist. Not weird. anyone here across Timbers. Yeah, just don't course. be weird. Don't well, yeah, just don't be, just weird, don't be in weird. I kind of enjoy being weird. It's kind of my thing. If it's a good weird, <laughs> that's okay. Good weird. I feel like it's a good weird. Wow, it's good okay. weird. It's a matter of opinion. <laughs> but it's a really great message. We got to hear it at the nine, obviously. Yeah. So uh, I think it's one that when we talk about what hope is and what mm -hmm. hope isn't and where our hope comes from. So you're going to want to take That's notes. Good. Definitely take you're notes. You're going to want to take mm -hmm. notes. Caroline heard most of it. She stood, you know, kind of skirted in late today. So. <gasps> hey, Jeez. it happens. God, calling me out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, I'm human. We do. We skirt in late. I was late, super late, too. Speaking so of weird church okay. people. <laughs> I, I, well, well, I didn't tally it up and then well, it yell feels, at her. It feels like you have been keeping a tally. <laughs> it was just once. It's fine. That you're, you're, you know of. You're forgiven. It's okay. See? <laughs> weird church thing. Weird to say church right things. there. We're forgiven. You're forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Chase the forgiveness. Okay. Oh my gosh. Now I feel bad. It was. I you don't should know. feel bad. I no, thought it was going to be funny. And but... now you're lying in church. Oh my god. I do feel bad. <laughs> Listen. If you're watching online, then you're great and you're never late. So it's right. fine. You're already there here. If you're watching bad. us, then you're, you're early. Great. And if you're late, you're still great. I think he's trying to rhyme in a positive manner, and it's not late. <laughs> this is man. not this helping. This is not helping. This. Oh, man. So today, you're so going to enjoy because Toby is really talking about optimism. That's true. And, Ooh. and, and, and how it, change, it, needs, it changes your perspective of life. And, and with that optimism, what you can accomplish for the that. Lord. That's true. There you go. Wow. Good save. I listen. Thank you, Carolina. That was awesome. That that's was true. awesome. That, and that's, hey, this has been a fun optimist, it's been fun. optimistic moment. You gotta giggle, y'all. You do gotta giggle. You gotta giggle. Truth. Truth. You gotta Truth. giggle, y'all. That feels like a giggle, like a t-shirt, you know? It'd be a great one. Like a t-shirt and it's Ooh. like turquoise or something. Turquoise. turquoise? I don't know. That's Chase's happy color. That's my happy color. <laughs> it's not yellow. Jen hates uh, the color yellow. I really? I do. Uh, this I is kind of yellow. It's beige cream. Beige cream. I don't like yellow. Beige cream. Mm -mm. I don't like purple. Really? I hate purple. What do I hate? I like all colors. I like all colors. <laughs> I'm an all colors kind of guy. Um, yeah, you are, Chase. <laughs> yeah. This has gone off the rails. Well, so you know, we are doing something special today, too. Oh, yes. We've been uh, taking this month. Uh, as an opportunity to honor Toby and his family, mm -hmm. uh, Toby and Micah. We got to honor Micah the first week. Uh, and today we get to honor Ross and Bailey, their kiddos. Uh, and it's going to be, it's a really sweet time. Uh, Danny Stokes and Brian Hackney are uh, getting a chance to pray for them, and we get to give them a gift. What's really cool is you got to look at these pictures. I mean, these oh are like goodness, throwback, so early fun. 2000s pictures. And I know that because Ross had like the old Navy American flag shirt, and I had all of those, like, my parents always bought them, and so if you weren't wearing them, a big yes. old American flag on a gray T-shirt, then who who were you? you right. Know? But it's fun. It's getting it's to see fun. those pictures and getting the blessing is really cool. And, and it's fun to see every all the honoring that we've done. Like yes. as just in our world, that doesn't happen all that often. Yeah. And just a fun way to laugh and joke, but really and 
see funny pictures. And I think <laughs> especially the honoring of it has been so too, sweet mm-hmm. to see just really the hands on the love that was taken to, yep, to grow this church yeah. just from the core special. of it. Yeah, very true. Sandra, good morning. See you there. We are so glad you are here. Someone shouted you out about not liking bananas either. I don't either. like bananas either, everyone. <laughs> so funny. Hey, Brian, Hello. see you there on Facebook. Good to see you. We got Wendy. We got oh. Kimberly on. Mama Kim's here. There you Wendy. go. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, and, and also we want you to know, too, uh, we want to encourage you, if you're in the area, uh, if you can get here next week, Make sure you're here next week. It's going to be uh, the, the last service as um, that Toby's going to be here as our lead pastor before he transitions into his legacy pastor role. Uh, but it's a really special day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Toby's mentor is going to be speaking. Uh, Toby That's and true. Josiah are going to share. Uh, we're going to actually be having some some throwback songs for worship. That's what I hear. Uh, I'm going to yep. be crying. Yep. Maybe some tissue. Oh, bring Might lots of tissues. Tissue. We've got t- There's always tissues laying around here. Because uh, there's always tears. Good tears, though. Good tears. Optimistic. But stay optimistic. Stay Chase. optimistic. I'm just saying, there's <laughs> tears. They're good tears. Uh, but what's really cool, too, is rumor has it that uh, Brian Hackney may be joining the worship team next week as a little throwback honor as well. So That's it's going to be good. It's going to be That's a fun. lot of fun. I'm really excited. So, once again, if you're here, uh, of course, watching online is great if you're sick, if you're traveling. Uh, but if you're here in the area, wake up, get here, get a seat. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, next weekend but whether it's today next Sunday or throughout this week uh, there is an opportunity for all of us especially if you're watching online if you're uh, living outside of the Metroplex uh, to still get to honor Toby and Micah uh, and Ross and Bailey Uh, I know that our hosts already posted the link but I just want to kind of recognize that link there Um, this is an opportunity for you to send a message a prayer and encouragement to them as they step into this new season so you can click that link uh, fill out whatever you want to feel like can be as long or as short as you want uh, but I know that they're going to get to read all those, and that's going to be a really special time uh, for the Slough family. So click that link, do that, and uh, yeah. Any that's last? Some, that's something they really love. Oh, yeah. Just to be able to go back and read all that and have it as a good memory. And for sure. Just a sweet, a sweet time, a sweet step that we get to do wherever we are, in person yeah. and online. Absolutely. That you get to be a part of honoring Toby and Micah and their kids. So for sure. For I hope sure. you, I, I, I want to see a bunch of those come Yeah, in. I do too. I do too. Caroline? Yes, sir. Last words? Last words. Any last Whoa. words? You're, you're going to be alive I just for this Don't moment. Don't do that to me because... <laughs> you looked at me like... No. <laughs> last words are to be optimistic. There we go. That's a good one. Happy Very and cool. joyful. Happy Choose and joyful. It, spread it like a virus. Hello. It, but not Corona. <laughs> not Corona. But Only spread joy. Spread your optimism wow. like the Rona. There you go. Well, we are going to get to see, yes, Robert, a baptism right now as we start our service and get to spend some time worshiping together. So let's jump in. All right, guys, why don't we stand to our feet? Let's get ready to worship this morning. And we're going to sing this first song. The words are centered around the words, I believe. And just declaring that today and the strength that comes from that. I just want us to, to, uh, to lean into this moment. What that means is that when we declare that with our hearts, that actually allows for that peace that surpasses understanding to rise up in our hearts when we just declare we believe. It gives space for God to operate in our lives. It gives space for God to move, for hope to dwell up, for for peace to rise up in our hearts. Some of us need rest this morning. And I would say your pathway to rest is not hanging back, but actually leaning in. Because that's where God meets us, is the leaning in. So I want to ask you guys all to do something That may be really uncomfortable for some of you, but I just want you guys to raise your hands like this with me. Just raise your hands. That's right. I'm going to do this just for a second. And I want you to close your eyes, and I just want you to lean into this moment and say, God, I'm leaning in. And we're going to just pray together just like this. We're going to lean into this moment because God has something for us today, for each and every one of us. So, God, we just lean in today. We believe that what you say is true. We believe that what we're singing What we're praying about, what we're leaning into this morning is the bedrock of our hope, of our salvation. It is what we lean into for our healing and for for what our 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 faith, God. We just we just lean into this moment, God. We give you this time, we give our attention to you, Jesus, and we declare this morning that we believe you are good and we love you. Jesus. We sing, I believe in the blood. Jesus, the wash is white as snow. I believe that the power of the 
everybody it's good to be with you today we are doing one of my favorite things around here we get to celebrate some baptism with these three fine men I wish I had uh, the time to go into each one of their stories in the way that they're publicly professing their trust in Jesus but let me just tell you there's nothing you know magical about this water there's nothing powerful about this water or even spiritual about this water what's what's powerful is that they are making a public profession of faith in front of their family that's what baptism is all about that's why we do it because there's something that happens in our hearts when we say something publicly wouldn't you agree with that it solidifies a belief that we already know and so as they step into this water and and take that leap of faith and they come up what they're saying is I'm making it known to the world that I am choosing a better 
way. And so it's something we celebrate together as their family. And so what we do around here is we like to pray for them. And so if you would, if you're, if you're comfortable, one of the things we do is we extend our hand out as we just pray a blessing over them today. God, we're so grateful for Dylan and Gary and Jackson as they take this step of faith. We're thankful for this public profession that they're making, that they are choosing to follow you, that their trust is in you and you alone. So we are grateful for the way that you're gonna bless them on their journey. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. Well, while they're getting baptized, we're gonna continue to worship, and I just encourage you to worship and celebrate right along with them. When they come out of that water, don't be afraid to make some noise and get excited for them. This is so amazing that we get to do this together. So come on, let's sing, let's worship our King together. Grace 
I stand. Here I stand, high in surrender. I need you now. Come on, let's make that our prayer today. Hold my heart now and forever. My soul cries out. Come on, here I stand. Here I stand, high in surrender. I need you. I'm healed. I'm healed and forgiven. Oh, look where my chains are now. Death has no hold on me. Cause your grace holds that ground. And your grace holds me now. Your grace holds me now. Grace holds me now. Oh, your grace holds me now. Oh, your grace holds me Through. 
together, God, we are so grateful. We're so grateful that you are the King of Kings. You're the King over every situation in our life. You're the most powerful King there ever has been, and you are also our friend. You are near to us. You celebrate with us in times of celebration. You mourn with us in times of mourning. You are the perfect King. And so as we worshiped today, as we sang these songs, God, would you help us to take that truth and it not just to be a song, but it to be something that we believe in our heart that as we leave this place later today, as we walk back into difficult situations this week in our work, school, with our family, life, would you help us to remember that the King of Kings is near, that the King of Kings is for us, and that God, you are with us always. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, well, good morning. You guys can take a seat. I am so glad that we get to gather on Sundays like this, that we get to worship together, uh, that we get to hear a message that encourages and challenges us. Uh, my name is Chase, I'm one of the pastors here, and if you are new, I hope I'm not the first one to say this, but welcome home. Uh, I'm so happy that you chose to be here today to give up some of your time to come in and check this place out. You know, one of my favorite things about Cross Timbers, about our, our church is at the heart of who we are is that we wanna help people. We wanna help people, and we do it in lots of different ways whether we're helping people with their hurts, habits, hangups, or our healing place through pastoral counseling opportunities, through our support groups, or whether it's helping with practical needs like we do at our Hope Center, our heart is to help and everyone everywhere with whatever they may have going on in their life. And we do that in a couple different really cool ways. One of the unique ways that we do, and if you've been around Cross Timbers, you've heard of this event. We do it a couple times a year. It's called Fix My Ride. And it's really great marketing because it is exactly what it is. We fix people's rides. And what I love about Fix My Ride is we take an opportunity to help people with some minor car repairs and maintenance that typically can't afford it on their own. Last year, we got to fix 75 cars as a church family. And I'll be honest with you, yeah, that's some celebrate, absolutely. And this year, I, I wanna take it up a step. Chris Roach, our Hope Center director, I promise you, he was right behind me saying the same thing. Like, we wanna do more, we wanna fix 100 cars, 125 cars. And what's really cool is there's lots of ways to be a part of that day. If you're like me, and the only thing you know about a car is that you get in it and drive, that's okay, you can still come and serve and pass out breakfast. Please help us by not touching the vehicles, right? They keep me very far away, I promise you. 
But what I love about Fix My Ride, and I'm gonna go off script on this next story here. Josiah said I could, so I'm gonna take that permission. Uh, what was really cool is like we got a text at the end of this past week from one of our, our families here at Cross Timbers and they had an unexpected death at their office. Someone who was part of a, a small team and it was out of nowhere and they didn't even really know what they were asking. They just said, hey, could someone come and pray for us? And it was really cool to see a couple of our pastors not just go and pray, but like because of our church family, we bought them lunch. Right, we, we bought some gift cards for them and said, hey, like, go and just get a pedicure together. Go take care of yourself today. Got to pray a prayer of blessing over them. You see, there's nothing really special about these two things. Like, Fix My Ride is an event on a calendar. Helping someone in the middle of the ditch just happens. But we get to do this as a church family because of you. Like, when you say yes, when you say yes to letting God use you and your life, and when the person on your left and the person in front of you and behind you does the same thing, we can do some very special things in our little corner of the world. And so yes, it does look like saying yes to an offering, to giving, but more than just that, it's also saying yes to saying, okay, God, like use my talent, use the thing you've blessed me with, the gift that you've given me, it's your time. I think about our kids and students who, students meet on Wednesday and our kids are at the front of the building right now and it's people who are saying yes to doing their best to teach those kids about how Jesus can be their forever friend. Our corner of the world, our county, our church, this community changes when a bunch of people like you and me raise our hand and say, okay, I'm ready. And so you can give through the online text there. You can put money in the box on your way out today. But even this week, outside of this hour we have together, I wanna challenge you. Like, What would it look like for you to say yes to using your life to bless somebody else this week? At your work, your school, whatever it might be to sacrifice a little bit that someone else ultimately could know the love of Jesus because of you. So thank you, thank you for continuing to consistently give, for showing up. Our serve team, ushers who are helping people find seats right now, like thank you so much for being generous with your life. And speaking about being generous with their life, today we're gonna be wrapping up our series called TED Talks and more than just a series, these are really the the three big messages of Toby's heart. Toby's our lead pastor who's gonna be transitioning into a new position of legacy pastor and Josiah Anthony is gonna be our new lead pastor and next weekend is gonna be our big celebration weekend to honor Toby and to honor not just Toby but this place, like how far God has brought Cross Timbers, the thousands of lives that have been changed, ultimately because Toby and Brian, our other founding pastors said yes, 22 years ago. And so last week, if you were here, we did that really awkward thing where we stood and we clapped and Toby hated every second of it. I thought, okay, last, last message, we won't do that to him, but I wanted to do something special. I wanted to just pray a blessing over him. And as we just did with baptism, and as I learned a long time ago coming here, like the simplest, greatest gift you could give in this moment is just to stretch your hand out to him. So Toby, could you come up here? And I just, Think it'd be really special if you just stretch your hand out as a visible sign that your love and appreciation and a blessing from God through you to him before he shares a message today. Is that better than clapping? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So God, we're, uh, we are so grateful. We are so thankful uh, for this place. We're thankful that we, every single week, get to gather in this space we get to worship, God, we get to, to celebrate, we get to mourn, God, we get to raise our kids here. We get to lead them to you, Lord, and it's ultimately because, God, you placed a calling on Toby and on Brian. You gave him a dream that church didn't have to look the same, that life didn't have to be what sometimes it looks like this right in front of us, you gave him a dream that this could be a place for all of us in the middle of our mess, 
to come, to experience God, you, to be encouraged, to feel loved, to be known. So God, I'm so thankful for Toby and his heart. I'm thankful that what he's about to do is what he's done thousands of times, is he hears from you, God, and he shares your heart for us. So I pray a prayer blessing over him and over this message for everyone in this space that his sacrifice week after week, year after year would be honored, God, it would be celebrated because it has turned into life change for each of us. So thank you, God, and I pray a blessing over Toby today as he shares your heart for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Michael. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you? Um, it's interesting that Chase is, was uh, introducing the message today because Chase and I had a heart-to-heart a few weeks ago after the debacle, which was Dallas versus San Francisco. Uh, Chase was sitting in seat 1A of the bitter bus. I mean, he was angry. And, and uh, I said, well, Chase, I need to tell you a little story. I'll tell you what I told him. I said, I grew up in... Houston, Texas, 35 minutes from the eighth wonder of the world, the Astrodome. Uh, And I was a Houston Oilers fan. Come on, somebody. Love you, Blue. Bum Phillips, Earl Campbell. Houston has the Oilers, the greatest football team. I know the whole song. Uh, And there were only two kind of fans in my little town that I grew up in, my peers. There were pure people that love the Oilers, and then there were the heathens that liked the Cowboys. And that was a season in which that, uh, like, the Cowboys just dog-stomped the Oilers every time they got together, except for one Thanksgiving. Turkey on the table, crumbs on the floor, Houston 30, Dallas 24. Thank you very much. (laughs) But every year, I would think this is the year. It's gonna be the year. And every year, in the craziest of ways, my beloved blue found a way to lose. And so I made a decision. Uh, but Adams, the owner, decided they were gonna move to Nashville and I decided I'm not picking a team again. It's gonna be more fun to just not, just be a casual fan. But don't get behind a team because if you do, they'll just break your heart. Which is Kind of funny when you think about football, trivial to some of you who could care less about sports. But this is where a lot of you, a lot of us, are living our lives right now, aren't we? I mean, we could talk just about the last two years and the uncertainty and the disappointment and the toll it's taken on families and marriages and psyches and. But even outside of this last two years, you get your heart broken. Your child rebels. Your dad leaves. Your friend dies. And there's a piece of us that says, I'm just not going to hope anymore because I'm tired of being disappointed. Anybody but me fight that ever? Anybody? And you just kind of settle into a life of, if you will, holding your cards close to the vest. You just don't believe big for anything. It's interesting because in this Ted Lasso show, instantly I went back to my childhood when Ted said this, he's talking to a group of friends, new friends he's made in uh, England. He says, so I've been hearing this phrase y'all got over here that I ain't too crazy about. The phrase is, it's hope that kills you. It's the hope that kills you. You know what? I disagree, you know. I don't think it's the lack of hope that comes and gets you. See, I believe In hope, I believe in belief. 
that the call of God, you were designed to believe big. You were designed to be a vessel filled with hope. And we'll get to just a moment what it means to be filled with hope. Uh, When you're hedging your bets and holding back, you are living outside of the way God designed you to live. And you know what happens if you live outside of the way God designed you to live long enough? The life gets sucked right out of you. Now, I don't know how many of you have paid attention or noticed, but as Chase said, and if I had three messages to teach, I told our team this would be the message I would teach. They're all three words from the Apostle Paul. Uh, it's hard for me to describe to you how much I love the life of this man named Paul. I, I, part of it is I'm an evangelist by nature, and Paul is killing Christians, and or Saul is killing Christians, and God, you remember the bright light, and you read it, and you go, well, nobody's beyond it. Like, there's nothing that's too hard for God. Like, part of it is, I think Paul is so direct. <laughs> I kind of appreciate his directness most of the time. But I think most of all, it's because He has this lens that he looks at life based upon some deep personal convictions, not what's happening around him. If you weren't here last weekend, I'll just just quickly tell you that I think that Paul's words in 2 Corinthians, where he talks about his thorn in the flesh, I think that's the lens that he looks at life, that God is good, that God is at work, and that it's in my weakness that God's greatest power shows up. So Paul plants all these churches, right? And, but he's got a favorite. His favorite is this church he planted in Philippi. Uh, now, maybe he told every church he planted they were his favorite, but I only planted one, so you guys are my favorite. <laughs> but he's got this deep affection for Philippi, and he's in jail. He knows his days are numbers, and he wants to write this letter back to his Philippian friends. And in this first little section that if you've gone to church for any amount of time, you have heard in some form or fashion, I think you see not just that Paul fights for hope and believing big, but look at me, this is important, how Paul fights for hope and for believing big in God no matter what says this, he says, I thank my God every time I remember you and all of my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So I've got about 12 minutes, stay with me. Everybody look up here, pay attention, 12 minutes. This is important. Number one, you need to see the middle is the core that Paul is talking about finding hope because of his partnership in the gospel. I'm not talking about, you have to work for the kind of hope Paul has. You have to give yourself, it's a work of the spirit. You partner with God and God starts doing something. But if you're not, taking the seed God has put in your heart and planting it in the right way, in the right place, you're gonna end up like everybody else. You with me? And he says, look, this is based in a partnership in the gospel. Partnership, the word is koinonia, right? It it means lots of things in the New Testament. It means deep affection. It means people being connected. The word it's used here, it means we are, our hearts are forged together by a mission, I've been watching this show on uh, Paramount Plus. It's called The Texas Six. It's one of the greatest shows I've seen in a while. It's about six-man football in strong Texas. And I loved it. And Mike and I are watching it, and I know it'll shock you. We cry and go, there's nothing like team sports. Why? Because these six kids, they are fused in a mission. Right? But Paul says, no, this koinonia, this connection... 
It's in the gospel. The good news of Jesus. What is he saying? He's saying that you will never be able to believe big, to live with biblical hope without being connected to other people through the good news of Jesus. Like a team sport, as great as it is, is not enough. A station in life with your kids, it's not enough. It's got to be forged in the fire of life. And it's got to be centered in the good news of Jesus, the gospel. So a few weeks ago, we're in Petal, Mississippi, where my second house is, and my three grandkids, and, oh, her par- their parents too, but... Uh, we're pretty excited because Gideon has a basketball game and we haven't gotten to watch this kid play basketball. And so we go to this little Baptist church. I think it was called like the Second Baptist Church, which is crazy because we passed seven others that didn't have a name, I mean a number, but we go in and they start playing the game and it's typical, you know, everybody's cheering, yelling at the refs, yelling for their kids and just typical little kids basketball. But at halftime, this dude walks out and says, my name is so-and-so, I'm the pastor of plumbing here at this church. He was the maintenance dude. And I'm here to give the halftime devotional. They're in some little program called Upwards. I didn't know what that was. Some of you are shaking your head. Look at me, everybody. Dude, the dude went on for 34 minutes. That ain't a d- Devo. That's like a homily. I'm looking at Mike and saying, are you kidding me? Can he read the room? He lost her by about three minutes in. You know what his message was? You're shooting at the wrong basket. You need to do better. That was the message. 34 minutes of how you're shooting at the wrong basket. You need to do better. And if you're not, God's God's gonna kick you off his team. It took everything I had. Like I wanted to go hunt him down and say, dude, that is not good news. That's not the gospel. It's not what you do. It's what Jesus did. It's that while you were shooting at the wrong basket, Jesus loved you, came to you. That the good news is I get to be on his team even though I'm shooting at the wrong basket. Y'all with me? And like, like I have to be reminded, Kent, I'm enough. That God loves me right where I am. That I need people in my life that I'm forged heart to heart with the message of the gospel because I need good news. So Mike and I, my kids are here today. That's why I'm staying on this side of the stage. So I don't just lay on the ground in a ball, but you know, most of the seasons of our lives have been spent here. Fifth grade, and we pulled Bailey out of little school over in Roanoke in the middle of the day. Brought her to Argyle, little school struggling to be 2A. Put her in a class and with all the girls her age, and you know, we... Try to navigate the mean girl phase. That's funny on TV, but it's no fun when you're through it on either side, right? And uh, there's some family. Some of them came today. I got to hug one of their necks coming in. I mean, we've been connected ever since. I don't know if Dean's in the room, but I know this. If, like, if I needed something, I would call and he would come running. He's a dear friend. I have, we have that all through these seasonal stages because when our kids graduated, guess what happened? Everybody went their other ways. We're all chasing grandkids, man. You know what's never changed with a very, very, very small circle of who I would consider my family? Our only connection was we were in the ditch and God brought us out together. Like you need those kind of people in your life. Every one of you do. And I know small groups get weird and you got burned in one and nobody, I don't care, go do it again. Do whatever it takes to start building relationships where finally you look up one day and go, I couldn't do life if I didn't have this person. They're only accountable. They're the ones I'm saying, hey, help me do this. This is what Paul's saying, partnership in the gospel. Like, that's the seed. And then he says, if that's the seed, you know what the soil is? It's Thanksgiving. 
I thank my God every time I remember you. You go, okay, great, a message on Thanksgiving. No, I wanna talk to you about selective memory. Like, here's the secret, everybody. Paul says, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers. You guys remember the story of Philippi? Like his first little mission effort was this sweet little girl who's possessed by a demon. He cast the demon out. The shopkeepers come because he's stolen their income. They beat him within an inch of life and throw him in jail. He just chooses to remember his relationship with Lydia. He chooses to remember the people. Like nobody's life is not a mixed bag. And you can't control what happens to you, but you get to decide where your focus is. Like if you're going through a challenging season at whatever level or you're disappointed or there's hill to climb in front of you, like when I lay in bed at night, I usually think about the negative stuff. Anybody else besides me? Anybody? Do I need to have a class on authenticity here? What? How about y'all over here? I mean, does your brain like go to the good stuff or the bad? It goes to the bad stuff. You know why? You have an accuser of the brethren is what the devil's called. So the dumb thing for me to say to you would be, well, just don't think about that. That's stupid. I could try that with my anxiety. Well, just don't think about it. Oh, great, dear. We're going to fire the counselor. You're awesome. (laughs) No, you replace it with something else. Like I have, I've, I have a varsity letter in replacing negative things with positive things because I've practiced so much. It's hard, but I, 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 have, to, I have to be, have a selective memory or if I don't, just all the hope, all the life gets sucked out of my soul. Right? I mean, thanks. Number two, when you, Read this passage. He says, I always pray with what? Joy. Like I have a really negative relationship with the word joy. Any of you that battle mental wellness and you hear the word joy and you see pictures of little kids ah, and they're happy and the pastor told you that's what joy is and you, here's what you think. Well, I'm never going to be there, which makes you less joyful, by the way. That's a whole cycle. <laughs> you know what I think joy is? I think joy is a, a senior citizen with physical limitations. That life is kind of sitting in a rocker looking out the window, but it is well with their soul. It's indescribable. You, you have aunts, uncles, grandparents, many of you of the next generation that you go, yeah, that's who they are. That's what my heart longs for. Like the seed is this connection, the soil is this thanksgiving and the water on it is joy. It's not an emotion. You don't have to be happy and be joy-filled. I don't know if she's watching uh, today, but like I watched my mom grow in joy as her body is worn down. It's so inspiring to me. She has to have a walker, and uh, she's, some of you know me, know how tough it has been on her, but you know what? I've seen her grow in the most the last five years. It makes me, it's heroic to me. It's, she's not happier, but she's more, it is well with my soul about life. That's what I want to be. But it's got to be rooted. If it's If it's planted in the soil of gratefulness and it's watered by joy, what he says here, it's got to be rooted in confidence in the right thing, right? Confidence in the right thing and being confident of this. You see it? That he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Look at me, everybody. What I'm talking about is not wishful thinking. It's not, boy, I sure hope gas prices go down. It's killing me. I'm gonna have to go get me an electric car if gas prices don't go down. Boy, I sure hope the boy calls. Boy, I sure hope my kid does good. That's not what I'm talking about. 
that it's not even, boy, I sure hope this situation turns around. Notice what he says. His confidence is in God. God started it. He who began a good work in you, God is maintaining it and God will complete it. Like hope comes from the un, no matter what's happening, I know God is in it and I know God will finish what he started. Like he will not leave you hanging. He will never, Moses well, said this way, he'll rarely do it as quick as you want him to do it. And it's rare, to, it's like finding an albino zebra that he does it in a way you think it ought to be done, but he never leaves you hanging. There's no half filled, you know, uh, oceans. There's not half a mountaintop got pushed up. They've all deteriorated or dried up. That's not how they started. Why? Because God finishes what he starts. He's going to finish what he started in your life. But your confidence has to be Christ in you, the hope of glory. That the God of the universe who created it all, who appeared in the form of a man named Jesus, now lives in you. And you may not sense it. You may not understand it. But he's there. And the realization of that brings hope. Like you see the world differently. My dad left me a voicemail last night, Dave. He said, hey, it's your last Sunday. Just say whatever you want to say. The most disappointing thing about the last two years to me is I've seen very little difference in the capital C church and those who don't claim to know Jesus when it comes to hope. I don't, I don't see the church, I don't see believers posting different stuff than everybody else. Everybody's chasing the same rabbits. Like, that's got to change, man. Agreed or not? Like, it's got to change. It's, like, it's not like we need to do better. We need to get planted in the right soil with the right seed. Rooted in the confidence in Jesus and choosing joy and everything. Quit saying, I'm not negative. I'm just a realist. There is a kingdom that you cannot see that is more real than anything you see. Let's be people of hope. You with me? Hey, listen. Like, I don't know how much time they're going to give me next weekend. I hope you come, because I can tell you this. We're going to worship our face off, and we're going to celebrate Jesus. I uh, hope you'll come. But uh, I don't know how much time they'll give me, or if I can get a word out. Can I just say something personal today? Be okay with everybody? Like, I thank my God every time I remember you. And God has done something amazing here. Been cried right at it, John Boy. I am convinced that the next wave is coming. He who began a good work in us. I, the future is bright. I can't wait to be a part of it. But we got to get connected to one another in the gospel. And we got to start believing again. Uh, what an honor. To have her front row seat to all of this. Y'all have been so kind. Listen, I, need, I just got to say this. 22 years, uh, anything we've given, God's poured it back tenfold into our lives. Like, we're the recipients uh, of more than we could ever ask or imagine. 
and I love you with all my heart. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, uh, that Jesus lives in me. Thank you, Father, that uh, you always finish what you start. I just pray that there'll be people that would walk out today and they would say to their mates, you know what? I'm, I'm, he's right. I'm committing to building gospel partnership, coining the relationships. Let's start together. Uh, I'm praying that there's going to be some husbands who are going to say to their wives, you know what? Hold me accountable. I, what comes out of my mouth, I want it to be positive and life-giving. I, I want to be a person of hope. And I am so grateful uh, that you would love us enough to choose all of us. Uh, and so I just say with all my heart, thine is the kingdom and the power. And may you receive all the glory, Father. In the name of a resurrected son, named Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, as you know, we have, you guys can sit down. This might take a minute. <laughs> as you guys know, we have taken the month of February to just pause and honor Toby and Micah. And today we wanna take just a few minutes to honor um, his kids, Bailey and Ross. Their kids, Bailey and Ross. Uh, we would not, we would not uh, do this right if we didn't take today to honor those two. And so I'm gonna ask um, Brian Hackney, the other founding pastor family here to come on up with Ross and Bailey. Y'all can welcome them to the stage. So uh, it's interesting because these two go way back in my memory. So I can see them as these amazing adults and I know their spouses and I know their little kids running around, but it is so easy for me to let my brain go back to 2001 when they were both in junior high ministry here and I was a youth pastor. And uh, even some pictures that are gonna come up on the screen of 2001, the very first student ministry camp that Cross Timbers ever hosted. And you know, here's the thing. <laughs> It's a good picture of Ross. You work on that tan, dude. My goodness gracious. <laughs> Great pictures. But you know, Bailey and Ross, the thing that I thought of when I, when I was kind of reminiscing and looking at these pictures, it reminded me that, man, when you're the founding pastor and, and the staff was small back in those days and we had an event, everybody did everything. And so, you know, we had this camp and Toby flew down and spoke a couple of times. Micah was there as a counselor and I was there as a youth pastor. Like, everybody just does everything because there's only a few of us and we gotta go knock it out and get it done. And it just reminded me that, man, it's a different deal to grow up in a family when you're the founding pastor. And just a couple of things for you guys today. You grew up in this ministry, we've, re we've referenced that. Brian, you told me I was too serious this morning, so I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to lighten it up here a little bit. <laughs> um, but a couple of things that I just wanted to say, man, as a pastor and, and you have kids that grow up in ministry, your prayer is that they grow up to love Jesus. And your, your hope is that they don't grow up resenting the church for all the times you have to be out late and for you know, how Sunday comes with relentless regularity and all the things that come with being a pastor, a founding pastor, and you guys were the kids in that family. And so there was a sacrifice on your part. And I am just like Micah and Toby, man, well done, look at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they both, they both love Jesus, they're both, um, active in the church and believe it's the hope of the world and so that's amazing. And I just, I think it's awesome to recognize that and just to, to take a minute to say that 
out of all those times growing up that you saw things happen in the church and with your family that you grew up and you don't resent the church and you do love Jesus. And today we recognize there's a price that was paid in that for y'all. And we just want you to know, man, we love you guys and we honor you today and that you're very much a recipient of the honoring that we're doing this, series, this month because of what you experienced. So thank you guys. Amen. Well done, Danny. Thank you, man. <laughs> Lightened up a little bit. So, wow. So 28 years ago, I met you too. 28, so you were like four, five, what, six, seven? So I did the math there. So what the pictures didn't show is the first memory I have of Ross were the round red rim glasses that he used to wear. And you said there were Mickey Mouse on there. It's interesting, these round red glasses. I'd only seen Sally, Jesse, Raphael, and my mother-in-law wear those. <laughs> But hey, they worked on him. Look good on you, man. You're just, uh, the other thing was, like you were like six, and Jamie had made some homemade chocolate chip cookies. And she offered Ross a cookie. And he said, no, thank you. What's that? It's a worst story. Oh, yeah, you know, it's true. And, and she said, wait, they're, they're chocolate chip, Ross. You want a cookie? He said, no, thank you. And she said, well, what's the deal? And he said, well, my mom's around. So Micah spoiled the kid on that slice and bake, right? <clears throat> I'm not gonna say what I said in the first service. I actually made this big lie up that he had this huge celebrity crush on Madonna, of all people. So that was totally made up. It was not true. But it was Britney Spears. Oh my gosh. This kid, guys my age, we had Farrah Fawcett. You all remember the poster, right? This kid was had it for Britney Spears, man. Did you end up getting that free Britney tattoo you were gonna get? Anyway, so yeah, we can't, <laughs> okay. Cut that, tech guys, can you cut that? Seriously, I've, I've watched you two grow up and you know, Toby, just being a friend of Toby's, I had a front row seat to all the series of painful releasings that parenting can be. Like Danny said, I mean, we all did everything together and we watched you guys get baptized. We watch you go through the middle school years and him throw the car keys to you for the first time. And you guys go off to college and get married. And it was so cool because Chandler was a little bit behind you and Christian was behind you. And man, I learned so much. That was invaluable, Toby and Micah, the way you poured into these kids. And we watched them make mistakes. We watched you make mistakes, but we learned so much. Um, you know, I, I say we don't raise our kids, they raise us. And seeing you too, the way Christ in you just started developing, yes, you're a lot like your daddy, and yes, you're a lot like your mommy, but I see the Christ in you. I see a unique Ross, right? A Ross that loves on people in the healing place and privately pours wisdom and discernment into all these people. You don't have to have the spotlight, you do it quietly. And man, I learned from you. You're a stud, dude. I love having you in the healing place. And Bailey, just watching you um, become the, the wife and the mom that you are, but more than that, the best friend you are with your dad, the podcast, the be a Gobi work, and all that you're gonna do. And what I really, truly love about you is the way, yeah, you battle, like it, we all battle, but the way you live so vulnerable and out loud and you press into God with all your stuff and you point people to Jesus and you do that so authentically mm -hmm. and lives, they're watching you and they're gonna learn from you and you're gonna bless a lot of people. You are blessing a lot of people. So, Toby and Micah, uh, man, we love you guys. Uh, the wisdom that you've shared with us all the way that you poured into these kids and poured into our kids and poured into marriages and poured into us so we could pour better into our parents. Thank you, thank you, we love you. And this right here, this is a legacy of Toby and Micah, but as you finished today, Toby, this is a legacy of Christ. The Christ that became Jesus, that lives in us all, is manifested in Bailey and Ross. So thank you guys. So God, we do, we thank you for the work that you continue to do in Bailey and Ross. The way that you uh, manifest your presence in them uniquely and individually. 
the cool things we see that Toby and Micah passed down to them and the cool things that they just nurtured that you put in them. And God, we just thank you for uh, all that they've done and they're gonna do. I'm so thankful for Ross being uh, the Christ for so many broken people struggling with depression and anxiety and addiction right here in the healing place. I'm so thankful for Bailey in Mississippi doing her thing and showing God through her and through her marriage and through the way she is a mom and through the way she handles anxiety. God, I thank you for all that you do uh, when, uh, when we just allow you to be in us. And uh, I thank you for the legacy that these guys are and what you're gonna continue to do in Cross Timbers. Uh, in them and in their kids. And I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. 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 You. All right, here you go. Thank you. So one more Sunday, I wanna invite all of you guys to come back next week as we spend some time honoring the family. Uh, one last time here in February, it's gonna be fantastic. We've got a guest speaker next week. You're not gonna wanna miss um, that day with us. And a couple things uh, before you go. One is you heard Toby in his message today talking about the importance of having people that you walk with and connection there and Christ-centered relationships. Man, the first step of that is to make friends at Cross Timbers. If you don't have people that you're connected to here, would you stop by either our first friends table in the lobby or the information center and let us help make some connections and get you plugged in here? The other thing I wanna talk about is uh, March 11th, The Healing Place is sponsoring a date night. So we've got childcare, a meal, there's gonna be activities for couples. Um, there'll be a panel of folks from The Healing Place who are gonna discuss and have conversation about how to have a great godly marriage. And so that is filling up really fast. If you'd like to be a part of that, I'd encourage you to get signed up for it today. But that's gonna be on March 11th and it'll be fantastic. So you guys have a wonderful week. We will see you back here next Sunday. Have a great day.